we're doing a little bit of duct work here today. I'm taking out an old return duct because it uh, there's too much infiltration on the negative pressure side of the system. You can see all the dirt's built up on the inside of it from all the years of it just uh, just collecting dirt through the cracks. It's a pan joy space. It's a framed in return. One of the things where they box it in with framing, two by four framing, and then put sheetrock on it, but it's leaking through the cracks in the framing, maybe up into the attic around wiring holes and all sorts of stuff, and it's just filled with dirt. The inside of this duct is the same as this. It's just filled with junk. So we replaced the duct work, the panning at the bottom. I vacuumed it out and mastic sealed it. I uh, put a new piece of panning on it. I uh, didn't replace the box on the unit I was going to, but it was a little bit too tight to put the new box on there. So I, uh, I adapted the old box, sealed it up, and uh, put a new access door on it for the coil because the coil is the biggest thing. And you might recognize this coil from a prior service video uh, several months ago. It was one of those three service call combo videos. So uh, I'm going to get down to business, try to finish this up. We also have uh, Tropical Storm Sandy coming through, so I want to wrap this up and go on home. All right, this is our new panning. I took the old panning out. There's some of the old metal still up there. You see the cracks around it where the uh, dirt was drawing in. And what I did was I went and redid the panning, put a new collar in it, mastic the collar. Uh, all these metal joints are mastic on the inside, which I'll show you. Mastic on the inside, around the joints. So we're all ready. Up in the uh, cavity up there is where the framing is built. And the sheet rocks around it. It's also leaking uh, air from the ambient. Well, I wouldn't say ambient, but other areas which are not filtered. So I'm going to seal that up with metal, turn it basically into a metal plenum, and then mastic that too. As for right now, I'm going to go ahead and run this return duct, which is brand new and clean, over to the air handler, which is right there. Here's our evaporator coil for this train in air conditioning mode. I'm going to spray it down a little bit with some coil cleaner. What I'm going to use let's see, where is it at? It's a Rector Seal clean and safe condenser and evaporator coil cleaner. It's nice to coils uh, and I just rinse it off when I put it in AC. What I'll do is I'll spray this thing down real, uh, real well. I'll hook the return duct back up and then I'll turn the AC on for a little while and then we can uh, finish the other work after that. Uh, that way it'll rinse off and we're good to go. But uh, this coil's funky. It's always funky. The, uh, the actual fins are falling apart. It's had so much stuff on it over the years. So, I mean, it's just beat all to hell. And uh, my advice would be that if not, you're not gonna change the system, you change the evaporator coil. Uh, once PM comes around in about a week or so, We'll know exactly what this system is putting out as far as BTUs, and I guarantee it's very bad. I'm very confident about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this coil, and then we'll hook up the return duct. Be good to go. Like I said, stuff is funky. It's hard to get in around the components here. Get around most of them. Let that stuff kind of eat away at everything. There's a lot of funk on that coil. Oh yeah, a lot of funk. 
So we'll let that stuff eat into that and hopefully it'll look a little bit better when we're done. Last till we get a new evaporator, a TXV that functions properly. Uh, the system will be a whole lot better. All right, this is obviously my coil access door. When I redid the return flex, I added this coil access door on the uh, plenum here. So I'd be able to look inside and check it whenever I came back to do PM to make sure everything was going all right. And it gives you a little bit of a venue to spray this coil cleaner in there. So you have that. And you see you have the coil cleaner still on there. Uh, doing its best. It's got its work cut out for you. You see the grunge and grime. And that's a coil that I sprayed off not too long ago. So this duct is just horrible. But uh, this coil is pretty much done for. We're trying to get it to last as long as possible. My advice will be to get a brand new coil. But people don't always take my advice. But at least I'll have this opening to work through. And this is essentially a fire damper access door. If you have links that you have to reset fire dampers and things like that, this is the door you might you might use. And this is the door we use in the past. That's where I got the idea I thought about when we used to do commercial stuff. And it locks into place, and there's a gasket on the inside, so it's pretty airtight. And it gives you a great way to uh, check out coils and things like that. And uh, it's real nice because they don't cost very much. Uh, so it, it actually, uh, it's kind of nice. So that's all for that. I'm going to go back upstairs, and we'll start with the building the plenum out of metal. All right, this is our return drop. There's a return on the far side, which you can see there. A return on the near side, which I've taken the door off of. Uh, you can see the dirt build up inside of here. There's a lot of dirt. The duck was like that too. There's our new stuff down there. Looking very nice. That's where I mastic it so far. I gotta vacuum out the rest of the stuff. You can see all the cracks there where air can infiltrate. So we're gonna seal it up just like it was a metal plenum. The first step is I'm going to vacuum it all out and uh, get it prepared for the metal. Okay, I measured my first side here. Basically, I'm gonna take all these stud spaces and come on the face of them and fill in metal. So I measured my first side and it's 15 and a quarter across by 32 and 3 quarters. So I'm going to go ahead and put that piece of metal in there. Put this crown facing out so I can flatten it out. And that'll be our first side and then we'll take a look at it. See how it Alright, there's our first side and we'll fill in around the edges with mastic. We may not mastic right there. I may, well, I'm, I will mastic right there. I may not fill in metal right there because it's very easy to get in and mastic and fill up. The parts that are hard are the nooks and crannies. So we'll put another uh, metal uh, metal sheet right here across this side, and then we'll fill in the back side and the front side here underneath, and then uh, take that filter grill off and make sure everything's sealed up over there. And then we'll uh, mastic the whole thing, see how it looks. All right, our plenum is all finished and sealed up. The other return grill's in there, sealed up again. The return filter is now facing the correct direction. I actually had to vacuum it off a little bit because it was so. Uh, dirty believe it or not oh my gosh everything is mastic sealed all the joints are sealed up about as good as I can possibly do them what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to vacuum off this return grill then I'm gonna take this aero tape which is this uh, fine tape cut it in strips and go along the back side of the return grill so that we can have a nice flush seal because you see how much dirt's packed in there well, it was the same way on the other one. Uh, actually, it was a little bit worse on the other one. So it's obviously trying to draw air around the return grill and around the filter. Uh, enough times that the filter being plugged and the uh, blower will try to find air anywhere it can, uh, especially a torquey blower like the one that's down there now. It's going to pull air from wherever it can possibly find it. That's why you have air whistling through cabinet doors on air handlers and on where the line set goes through the air handler. Anywhere where there's a hole, it's going to try to grab air from that hole. And the dirtier the filter is, the more air it's going to try to grab. So, that's what we're up to here. I'm going to go ahead and do that and get it in place, and it will be done. going to measure out our tape here from where the indent starts all the way down. Let's see. Don't need a full width of tape, so we're going to go right down the top of the air tape. And that should give us right about an even strip. And this should give us extra bit of protection 
for it to do let the filters go too long or it's always going to draw air even if the filters clean when filters get dirty just the blower starves and grabs air wherever it can so we don't want it grabbing air around here Alright, now we can locate our screws. Inch and a half. White head screws. Number eights. Uh, got our location about as close as it was before. Make sure we're angling in to pull it in. There. They'll cinch it up tight. Airflow in. Just turn back the clock a week on that one. So we're good to go. We should have a nice return duck from grill to unit. Should have no air leaks. Uh, so happy campers all around. And stop that coil from becoming any more degraded than it already is. Um, unfortunately, it's already a little bit past its prime. We'll say that. So that's all for this one. Saturday night. That's what I'm doing.